Friends, uh, before I formally introduce Mr. Sears and free you, I wanted to make a presentation to him and they promised if we were running behind that they would make it as speedy as they could. So if they could come with this back. time I read the majestic words of the Master, how great, how very great is the cause of God. I think Thank 
can't think of Bill Sears. But I'm thinking of his wife, Margaret. It's hard to interview Because you're one of them. So the kindness of what they have both meant. In their long, long suffering service for the cause of God, I'd really like to introduce both Mr. and Mrs. Williams. I can't see any of it. 
I'm going to try to find a few things we can use. And that's why I brought the House of Justice Court from the beloved mansion to help me out in this crisis. I remember one of the first things that I, I put down here about the world, at the world, look at the world around us, it's getting worse all the time. Beloved Guardian said, you know, look at the world, see what they're doing, and do the exact opposite. <laughs> and the chances are you'll be right. If you're bringing up children, see how the world is doing it, and do the exact opposite almost, and you're almost certain to be right. Because we are changing ourselves gradually so that we can change the world. In this room here today, where I'm looking out, there are Baha'is around all places, but in this room, there are some of the most wonderful human beings that are today walking in the face of the earth because of the power you hold in the palm of your hand. And I wanted to talk about that a bit today. This is a compilation Baha'i life. Yes, it is. <laughs> That's good. So far, it's not too bad. Today. But, uh, beloved Master said, the Guardian cited this in here, page two, that the world is desperately seeking an answer to its mystifying and baffling problems, and they're not doing very well. But you sat out there with that power in the palm of your hand. Let me just read to you here from page two. That's what I did last night. That's easier to read than the book there before. Yes. Page two. This is from Shoghi Effendi. A letter to one of the Baha'is. Could have been to you. It means you. Listen. If you read the utterances of Baha'u'llah and Andrew Baha with selflessness and care and concentrate upon them, you will discover truths unknown to you before and you will obtain an insight into the problems that have baffled the great thinkers of the world. That's your own sacred writings about you and you can do that. Don't ever forget that. Read that every now and then. See, I've got all kinds of rooms to throw things here. <laughs> well, but that's wonderful, isn't it? Actually, I usually use that stuff at the back of, of my talk. But last night, I put it all up to the front, where I could get at it early on. <laughs> We're magnifying that. Have you felt that, what I just read about you? Have you felt that already? Good. Read it and think about it because that is you. Nobody else can do that. You can do that. And of course you change the world. I have here, I brought a, a thing I call a soul sheet. One soul, you know, can, they were told, can change a whole continent and change a whole country. One soul, one Baha'i. Anybody in this room. Sometimes we, we forget those things and I just wondered if, if you counted, right? I felt it yet. This time I came to tell you about a great difference that we've neglected that's going to fill us with joy. But I made these a little bigger. Listen, I was going to put that at the end, but we'll put it at the front, right? And uh, This is the box. Five separate sources of divine infallibility said this about you, and you, and you, and you. It says the box. Say verily that any one follower of the faith can by the leave of God prevail over all who dwell in heaven and on earth. Did you hear that? That's you. Prevail over all on heaven and earth. One who arrives in his name that Bob said. Yeah, I'm sure you don't know anybody except other Baha'is. Who could say that? Just think the power we have in this room in the palm of our hand. Uh, two, this is from Baha'u'llah himself. He says, say verily that any one follower of the faith can, 
when the leave of God prevailed over all well I was reading the Bob again that things like that may happen just accept of it and take the enjoyment of the wonder twice <laughs> this is from the blessed beauty Baha'u'llah he that summoneth men in my name is verily of me and he or she will show forth that which is beyond the power of all that dwell on earth. It's not a Mary or a Jim or a Jake or Sam who's behind you to the right of you. That's you. Every single one of you. The blessed duty is talking about. Think of the, of the power that vibrates through your soul with that promises. And the Baha says, in this century of the latter time, Baha'u'llah has appeared and so resuscitated spirits that they have manifested powers more than human. All right? I'll bet you when you looked in the mirror this morning you didn't say to yourself, you know, I got powers more than human. I'll have to watch myself. But it's true. It's very true. Um, show me a pendy. We can truly say that this cause is a cause that enables people to achieve the impossible. Right? Just think, isn't that marvelous? I see you over there. Right? Everybody, you can achieve the impossible. There is something casual that's there all the time for you. You just have to arise and believe that and start to transform yourself. And every day say to the Blessed Beauty Baha'u'llah, Help me today and send me to the right place. I'm going to change somebody's heart and the whole world will hardly know this country, America, in the near future. Last one of these is from the Universal House of Justice. I don't know, I mean that one big enough. It's so big that it comes right up off the paper as I remembered. The Universal House of Justice says, Dependence upon him, Baha'u'llah, enables the Baha'is to formulate audacious plans. Formulate audacious plans. And confidently carry them through to completion in the face of seemingly insuperable obstacles. Form the plans, start out, and never mind, you will sweep them aside. He said, the guardian says of the house of justice said, however hopeless the prospect may seem however hopeless the prospect may seem when you first face it Baha'u'llah will reinforce them, you, me enforce us with his hosts Baha'u'llah and will open the doors of victory before us I mean, this is all. I was going to tell that at the end, but I thought if I started with that, right? You might just swoon away, and we'd have to take a little time getting you back into your chair. I can see this is not going to be quite as fast as it was when I had it all written out. I could see it, but you won't. Here it says, one soul on fire with the faith can set the entire country ablaze. Truly, thank you, sir. And he said again, one soul, that's you or me, one soul can be the cause of the spiritual illumination of a continent. We're really something, you know. Eh? And when we leave this Green Lake Conference, wherever we go, I'm sure we will begin to transform ourselves in the world. It'll never be the same. Never. Because of this day so why are you so richly blessed? I think I'll put that in my pocket. I can find it. Why are you so richly blessed with such a difference? Beyond your wildest dreams, these things we're talking about. And the thing today that I came to tell you about that made it different was because of where you live, right? In the West, you probably forget that sometimes. But because we are in the West, we're quite different than any other Baha'is anywhere in the world. 
the importance and significance of that was often underestimated. Shoghi Fendi made it clear that it, the Baha'is, I heard it when I was on pilgrimage, if we really knew who we were, merely because we were the followers of Baha'u'llah, we would swoon away and die just if we really truly realized. And if we realized that we lived in the West and had done so little to see the opportunities the Master, the Guardian, and the Blessed Beauty talked about, we would be overwhelmed with our shortcomings and say to ourselves, that's all done in the finish. It wouldn't be different starting and with day, this day. The mob at the birth of the faith, as you remember, said to us, the peoples of the West, that we would issue forth, should issue forth from our city and aid the cause of God. He didn't say that to the north or the east or the south or the peoples of the West and establish a faith of God. The master said that the most important mission given to him by Baha'u'llah was to raise up the faith, Baha'u'llah's faith in the West. That's what Abu Baha said. You'll find it in God passes by. Of the important things he did, the most important of all, was to raise up the faith in the West. Because of you, those of you in this room, it says that I have a wonderful paragraph here in God passes by. Unfortunately, even with my manual on that, I couldn't read it. You read it. It's on page 253. It's absolutely wonderful. Baha'u'llah said about you in the West, bind up with justice. And when I say you, I'm talking to you because you know what me. I'm with you right there at the head of the list in the West, trying to realize it and become different. Bind up with justice the broken limbs of suffering humanity. Those of us in the West. He said, crush the oppressor of the tyrants with the rod of Baha'u'llah's command and change the face of the earth. The Master said the continent of America is in the eyes of God. The land where the land where the splendors of his Baha'u'llah's light will be revealed and the mysteries of his faith will be unveiled here in America where we are today. This American nation, our sacred writings say, has the potential to accomplish that which will adorn the pages of history and become the envy of the world and blessed in both the East and the West and proclaim the oneness of the hearts of mankind and make all the people the different people. I didn't use that when I remembered that. That's good. <laughs> well, that's, that's your destiny, our destiny in the West. I wonder if you feel, if you're really achieving it yet. I don't feel that way. Listen, Abdul Baha calls us the apostles of Baha'u'llah. That's how he addressed the believers in North America. That's what we did. It's fantastic. You and I, everybody in this room, have the potential to be called and recognized as the apostles of Abdul Baha, the mystery of God, pointed by the blessed good. Think of yourselves that way. All you have to do is when you look in the mirror, remember you're going to be different than you were this morning. Or this afternoon when you look, you're going to be different. And tonight and so on. Wonderful. I wonder if I, I don't feel I've accomplished any of that yet. I want to, but I keep falling down and skinning my nose and scraping myself up and trying again. And I hope you will too, because you're so wonderful. The world doesn't even know. When you get this in your heart here today, you walk out that door and up the stairs and along the steps here at Green Lane. People are going to turn around and look at you. What happened to him? What happened to her? There will be a different look in your face and a different feeling in your heart. 
none of that is here. I've got to stop that and move on. Or the next manifestation of God will be here. <laughs> you know I started a little late with all this. Always on the last day. Here's another quote. Consider the exalted and lofty station, this is the master, that you are destined to attain if you arrive. The full measure of your success is not yet revealed. We know that. But we can read them. The Master said of us in the West that our vast significance was as yet unapprehended. Even the world didn't know who we were yet. That's our call. We haven't shown it. Our mission, the Master said, was unspeakably glorious. If we in the West arise and succeed, a miracle will evolve into a center from which waves of spiritual power will surround all, all mankind and the hearts the hearts of men will change and the throne of the kingdom of God will be established on earth by us, not anybody else but by the world. This nation will then, we are promised will lead all nations spiritually. We've all known that. But what we're doing in the West with our potential is not leading it forward. You know, all over the world, masses are coming into the faith here and there. But the vast increase we don't have in the United States, we don't have in Canada. The two nations that were given all of these great potential in the West. And we have to arise and change that after we ourselves, the throne of the kingdom of God. There's something else to be to do that. It's like a Mrs. Kadem said about God passes by. So filled with wonder and rapture and joy. Is it any wonder that Abu Mahal would say of us in the West, who had the eye, the ears, and the heart to arrive, these magnificent, soul-touching words which he addressed to us. You can read them in detail on page 79, The World Order of Baha'u'llah. They're too small for me to read in my mind. But the Master said, the day is approaching when the West will have cast a tremendous tumult in men's hearts. Rejoice, therefore, O denizens of America. Rejoice with exceeding land. I went back to the library and looked that up, denizens thinking about what I've been doing for the West and the West and West. I thought denizens must mean something quite different than I thought it did. It didn't. It meant citizens of here. We have done that. Rejoice with exceeding gladness. Only one thing is standing in our way, you know, the friend, ourself. You know, like uh, Caesar said to Brutus, Shakespeare, he said, the Pope here for this is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are under. Of course, our writings say it much more, more beautifully than that. I'm running along a little thing here. Where did that go? This is a map you know, in the USA. Marguerite fixed it for me. I was starting out. You see the, uh, the golden uh, line around the edge? I have golden stars all over here. And I was going to put them, the golden stars, to show all the things we had won, you know, the victory. And then I was going to use the other colored stars to show you what we still had yet to win. And you know there were so many places where there, even in America, in the West, where there were no Baha'i yet. Cities and medium-sized cities, town, hamlet, villages, and townships, that the things that we had won there were buried. They were buried under the stars of what we had not yet accomplished in the West. But that's true. Check it out yourself. Not only for Wisconsin, for every state. And therefore, part of the uh, thing I wanted to tell you while you were here today was that before you come next year to Green Bay, 
Check out your neighborhood. Do it, but whatever you're doing, don't change your plans. You've got your plan and your, and your things to do from the National Teaching Committee and the District Committee. And all. Do all of that. But if you're nearby to some place where there's no Baha'i, commute there. Rise up and go there. Settle and still do your job wherever you are. Townships, whatever it is. So that when you look at the map next year in Wisconsin, you will see all kinds of new places where there is a Baha'i, where there wasn't a Baha'i before, in the West. That is one of the great victories to win in the West. The farther you go, the better, of course, the pioneer. But these are close to us. Don't stay where you are. Rise up and do something and let the West come to the front. I want to uh, You want to know I'm all for the little dots, Marguerite? All over me, one in the end of my nose. I have nothing to do with my job. If it weren't for Marguerite, I never would do any of those things. She is all of the things in the faith for me without portfolio. I want to say something so we'll never forget it about the universal cause of justice, right? Source of all good. Free from all error, so refuge of a tottering civilization. Now, when the Master was about to be crucified to the gates of Acca, cast into the sea, exiled to Tripolitania, you know what was the first thing he did way back then, before there was a guardian? He said that he called upon Toki Afnan. Mr. Talkie Afnan, who built his, the house of worship and mission by called upon him to raise up the universal house of justice. Immediately. Of course, he knew from the Willem Testament, which he was writing even then, that it was going to take some time until we had the National Spiritual Assembly. But as soon as possible, he didn't know what would happen to him. But he said that should be raised up just, just as soon as possible. And no matter when it was raised up in the world, whether it was without the beloved master or without the guardian, it would be the house of justice envisioned by Baha'u'llah. It would stand alone, unchallenged, and meet anything that came to the world. The house of justice, just think about it. Of course, he knew that it would take some time there were four souls in that day who didn't fall away from the faith, but they fell away from the work of the faith. And they said, well, what are we going to do now? How can we? Who's going to call for the house of justice to be elected if there's no guardian? The writings of the master, we find them in Wellspring of Guidance, that world order, Baha'u'llah, God passes by, gleaning in the documents and tablets of the master. He made it clear that there was nothing in our writing that said the guardian had to call for the election of the House of Justice. Nor did it mean that all of the National Assemblies of the world had to be raised up. Whatever we had in the beginning, they would raise up the House of Justice. And when they did, whenever they would be elected in the world, their majesty, authority, and greatness would be unchallenged. Isn't that wonderful? The Universal House of Justice. That was before we had guardianship and the master expected to be exiled, crucified at the gates of Acca, and all of those other things. Some of the Baha'i friends who were gathered would have them on that day. They were quite upset by that. They couldn't believe that the master would say that there was a house of justice who would be superior over the master. And they said, is the beloved guardian of God or not? He is the master. Is the all universal house of justice of God, or is it not? It is the master. Well, then, how, my friends, who loved him so, said, how can one holy instrument of God make a decision against another, especially against a beloved master, the center of the covenant appointed by Baha'u'llah himself? That's impossible. And the master smiled at them and said, 
My only purpose in telling you these things was to demonstrate for you the single, unique majesty and greatness of Mahabharata's universal house of justice. Under all conditions, without any exception, of course, Almighty God and Mahabharata never would let the Baha'i world community be deprived of 29 years of the, of the masters, great uh, skills and guidance and the apostolic or heroic age, the formative age, the golden age, the three ages that he gave to, gave to us in all the things in the will and testament, or the 36 years of the garden. But I said that so you would see the power of this body and who those men were who walked now in the sight of the mountain of God. And when they say, this is the year for everybody to arise, we know that when they say it, it is true. And that is the great power. They came to this world and they said that, didn't they, about, about this year. So, we have had all of this wonder of seeing the majesty and greatness of the house of justice. But then we come down and stand on the earth with the realization of who they are, right? Three ages of the master, the 29 years of his guidance, the years of the beloved guardian. And we're overwhelmed, right? That for 46 years, two messengers of God poured out the truth. For 75 years, Abdul Baha told us who they were and what they were saying. And for 36 years, the beloved master, beloved guardian, told us about all of them. Or more properly, 46 years of written revelation, 111 years of guidance in interpretation by the beloved master and the beloved guardian. So that's the power they have behind them now. So when they tell us something, rise up as though the words came from the tongue of Muhammad himself. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's marvelous. I wish I could share that with you, but I can't read it. <laughs> you know, the Master said also, when the temple was dedicated to public worship, 53, I think, doesn't matter, you know when it was. He said that when that happened, it marked the inception of the kingdom of God on earth. Already, 34 years ago, we've been living in the kingdom of God on earth with all of these wonderful things. I'm not surprised that, I am surprised, that you're not up by the ceiling listening to all of this and just slowly coming down to your chest. So many others. Let me just tell you this one. Seems to have nothing to do with that. But the gifts we have. Baha'u'llah wanted us to understand about contributions to the faith. How important giving was beyond our understanding. And read it for yourself, because I can't now, even if I can. I have it here, but print is too small. Page something, number 33, 53. Number 53 of the hidden words, the first. Baha'u'llah says in there, talking about our contributions, yours and mine, of all the believers, he said those contributions are so great, he was talking about the, one of the wealthy people who had given a large contribution to the faith, a million dollars or something. And he said, so great and significant is such a contribution that when that person who made that contribution goes into the next world, his arrival there will be like seeing the sun come up here in the darkness of this world to illumine the whole earth. That's the impact he will have in the next world on the Supreme Court and all those other people and all those other people with their great, their great contribution. Isn't that something? It will be like having the sun come up in the morning and banishing the darkness and changing the world. The person who makes such a sacrifice when he gets to the next world, those are the things that happen to them. This is all good. Enough. 
We know that we're told that the at the center of the faith, the shrine of the Bob is at the center of nine concentric circles. And from there, all of the knowledge of the past, the present, and the future circles around and goes out to the world. Prophecy says that knowledge, all knowledge, is 27 letters. Until the coming of the end of the bomb, only two letters of knowledge is in the world. Wherever you teach to all religions, they answer you and teach from a flat platform of two. That is not. With the coming of the Bob, all the remaining 25 were revealed to the world, and you hold in the palms of your hands. All 27 knowledge, all the knowledge that was, is, and will ever be when you teach other people. That's the problem that you hold in the palm of your hands. Many more, but I'm coming to the end. On page 25 of the secret of divine civilization, the master says about the faith of Baha'u'llah He says, this greatest of all remedies, the cause of God, if it is applied to the sick body of the world, it will assuredly recover from its ills and will remain eternally safe and secure for all time. That's you talking about. And that's what you other I had some other things I don't think of. I used them here. They're about the beloved guardian. They asked him, what about Isaiah's prophet? And he said that child was born already bringing into the world all of these things that we know about. In all of the books that he told us what we can do. And I won't go into them now. But that's our beloved guardian. And I have the bounty, the bounty, however inadequate I feel, of being one of his remnants. He has changed the face of the world with all of his ways. I was going to take more time than I don't want to do that. I'm coming to the end now to give the words at the bottom. You're much more wonderful than what I've said. That was only a beginning. The other guardian taught us about the bomb and blah, blah, blah. And uh, this final outpouring is from his pen, God passes wide. One, the sole object of all previous revelations and all religions, including his own, is the faith of the whole life. Page 97, God passes wide. These are all from that in the world order of the whole life. I won't recite each one. Two, the mere contemplation of the dispensation inaugurated by Baha'u'llah would have sufficed to overwhelm the saints, saints of bygone ages. These are the bombs and Baha'u'llah's words to you, you great and, and wonderful soul, never to forget. Three, in Baha'u'llah's outpouring of truth, all the past religions, since the beginning of time, since day one, have obtained their highest and their final consummation in your religion. Four, the day of the coming of Baha'u'llah is the springtime which autumn will never overtake. The day which will never be followed by night. Five, but for him, Baha'u'llah, no divine messenger would have been invested with the robe of prophet. <coughs> But for Baha'u'llah and his message, there would have been no Moses, no Christ, no Buddha, no Krishna, no West, no Muhammad, no holy messenger of God would ever have been heard of in the world. That's the power you hold in the palm of your hand. Six, but for him, Baha'u'llah, the promised one of all religions, all peoples, none of the sacred scriptures and holy books would ever have been revealed. No Old Testament, no New Testament, no Quran, no Linda Vesta, no Baghdad, no Gita, no Gita, no sacred scripture. None would ever have been heard of in the world if it weren't for Baha'u'llah and the Baha'i Seven, centuries, nay, ages must pass away ere the day star of truth 
such as Baha'u'llah, will shine up again in its midsummer splendor. Eight, I testify before God, the Bob said, to the greatness, the inconceivable greatness of this revelation. Baha'u'llah said again and again, have we borne witness to this truth that mankind may be roused from its heat, transform themselves, and then arise and transform the world so there will be happy, pure-hearted, and wonderful people walking the face of the earth. And nine, this preeminent, this most exalted revelation stands unparalleled in the annals of the past, nor will future ages witness its life. When next you meet at the historic Green Lake Conference next year, in addition to your teaching victories, beloved friend, see how many Wisconsin cities, or whatever state you from, smaller cities, towns, villages, and hamlets, and townships will now have at least one new Baha'i. So the West will start to come to the front and become what it really should be. May these words of the Bob, who in the earliest beginnings of our glorious faith, Remember, called upon us to issue forth from our city in the conquered world. He is once more calling to us. He says, Remember these words about Baha'u'llah, who himself said, Seize your chance. A fleeting moment in this day excel as centuries of bygone age. Let it be part of your life. Be different. Be a new kind of human being to change the world. Neither the sun nor the moon has witnessed such a day. Seize your chance, for it will come to you no more, and you will never have a like opportunity. And someone else may rise up and take from you the kingdom of God. The blessed Bob said to each one of us in the West, talking about God. And he said, when the appointed hour hath struck, do thou, Baha'u'llah, by the leave of God, reveal from the height of thy most lofty and mystic mind a faint, an infinitesimal glimmer, infinitesimal glimmer of thine impenetrable mystery, that they, thy followers, who have recognized thy radiance, may fade away as they catch a lightning glimpse of the fierce and crimson light that envelops that revelation of the Baha'i faith. And arise then, O ye denizens of the West, and became, become a different people. Please remember me in your prayers.